All right, let's take a look at some trigonometric limits. To be able to attack those, we need to take a look at something called the squeeze theorem. And the squeeze theorem is a little bit complicated. Uh, you need to have a couple of functions, L of x, called the lower function, and u of x, which is your upper function. And we're going to situate our function, or the function that we're interested in, in between. So our f of x is going to be sitting below the upper function and above the lower function. And the limit as x approaches c of the lower function is the same as the limit as x approaches c of the upper function, and we'll call that limit L. It's much easier to understand this um, graphically. We need to have one more condition before we do that, which is an assumption. We are assuming that x isn't c in an open interval. contains C. All right, so a sketch of this. Here's our point C. And we've got an upper limit, an upper function, some function that cruises along like this called U of X. And at the point C, we saw above, up here, at the point C, it has, U of X has a limit, L. So it's approaching L, this direction and this direction. And we've got a lower limit. I'll do it in, uh, sorry, a lower function. I'll do that lower function in green. L of X. And L of x at C also has a limit of capital L. And now our function, however our function works, our function sits in between the upper function and the lower function. And the squeeze theorem states that if we have that, our limit needs to be L for our f of x function because it's squished in between these other two functions. So our goal really is to find an upper function and a lower function that are sitting on each side of our function but whose limits are the same and therefore squeeze our f of x function to that limit or show that this squeeze happens so that we can actually find our limit by using the other two functions. Let's take a look at uh, some trig limits and how this fits in with trig limits as well. Okay, there are three important limits. The first one is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is always equal to 1. The second one is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x all divided by x is always equal to 0. And the third trig limit states that sine x over x is always bigger than cos x or equal to cos x and always smaller than or equal to 1 on the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 as long as x isn't 0. Let's just take a look at the third one and how the squeeze theorem shows that. 
Okay, let's take a look and see how this works and how it's related to the squeeze theorem. So I am just going to sketch this from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And I've got an upper function, uh, which is equal to 1. So here's my upper function. Limit is very easy to figure out on that one. And I have a lower function, which is the cosine graph. And the cosine graph, and I have a lower function, which is the cosine graph. And the cosine graph, of course, looks like this between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And my sine of x over x graph fits in between here. And because the limit of as x approaches 0, of u of x and l of x, the lower and the upper functions, as those limits both approach 0, or both approach 1, sorry, at x is equal to 0, the uh, sine x over x limit as x approaches 0 also has to approach 1. Here's some more examples of how we can use this. Let's see if we can find the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared cos 1 over x. So we'll start with um, the fact that a cosine graph, never mind the reciprocal in here, but the cosine graph always has to be, has to be between negative 1 and 1. Any cosine graph at all has to vary between 1 and negative 1. Even this one, even a more complicated cosine graph. The values that are coming out of it have to be between negative 1 and 1. We apply a little algebra trick to this and multiply everything by x squared. We'll produce our function that we have at the top. So this will be negative x squared will be less than or equal to x squared cos 1 over x, which will be less than or equal to x squared. Now, the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x squared is easy to find by the substitution method. And the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared is also easy to find. Since those are equal, the limit as x approaches 0 of our more complicated function will also equal to 0. Here's another one, slightly different. The limit as h approaches 0 doesn't really matter the variable, and we're soon going to see h is a lot more traditionally used for limits. The limit as h approaches 0 of sine 5h over h. Uh, we know that if it was sine x over x, if these were exactly the same, then we would be able to calculate this limit. That is the limit as x approaches 0. That's equal to, as long as those are exactly the same, 1. So we need to come up with an indeterminate form of this that produces that. And one way to do that is simply multiply everything by 5. Then this is equal to 1. And we have a constant function whose limit is just 5. So you can use indeterminate forms 
as well when solving some of these limit problems.